Welcome. Uh, this is a class activity. Uh, we are going to work with the calculation of equilibrium points uh, for epidemic models and also with the calculation of next generation matrices. And these calculations uh, will be uh, carried out with um, symbolic algebra system uh, extremely powerful and uh, free of charge so um, all you need is uh, internet connection and you need a browser and you will be able to use this software without installing anything in your computer so we're going to be using sage math uh, and that uh, is something that you can operate from uh, cloud this url cloud.sagemath.com um, you need to create an account, but this will be free of charge. So this uh, model is the um, SIR model with vaccination. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, you can see that the notation here has been um, used in a way uh, in such a way that these uh, state variables denote uh, proportions right so s plus i plus r add up to one and what we want to do is uh, to use the program sage math uh, to compute equilibrium points so let's see we have a, a list of a few uh, steps involved in the calculation we want to compute equilibrium points we want to uh, define uh, the states that we call disease uh, compartment and non-disease compartments um, and we denote those states with x and y uh, and then we want to form the operators f uh, operator f the operator v and then we would like to calculate the matrices uh, that, remember the operators here are denoted with that fancy f and that fancy v but then the matrices are denoted with uppercase f and uppercase v and then we uh, find the inverse of v multiply that by f multiply the inverse uh, of v on the right side of f and that gives us the matrix we call the next generation matrix and uh, then it's only just a few steps out of that uh, we just need to compute the eigenvalues. So this is the um, URL of uh, Sage. So at this time, uh, you'd like to get close to your computer and uh, you'd like to open a browser and visit this URL. So the URL uh, you'd like to visit is cloud.sagemat.com. So let's pause for a few seconds. Uh, you find this URL, and then <clears throat> uh, the other thing you'd like to do is to follow the instructions here. If you don't have an account, uh, you'd like to follow the instructions to create an account. It's very simple. You just have to specify your email address, uh, you choose a password, and then you sign up, and maybe there are other options in which you can create an account. So let's pause for a few seconds. Uh, you create your account and then we will continue. So uh, once you have signed, uh, once you have logged in to the Sage uh, Math Cloud, um, if this is a new account for you, um, you probably will see the space uh, very empty, but you will see, uh, um, you will see this rectangle. Uh, a link here for choosing something to create a new project. So you want to think of projects uh, that are a little bit of a similar thing as folders. It's the way in which you organize your files here. Um, so you can click on new project. You need to give it a name. Uh, you can choose to give a description. And um, let's see, my uh, first project of epi modeling something like that uh, and then we say create project and it takes a few seconds there and uh, then the project is listed so we can click on that project and this also takes a few seconds so 
you should be seeing something that looks very uh, similar in your end. Starting, starting, it takes a few seconds. There is that circle and then that thunder icon. And there you go. So this appears to be empty here. So what we do now is to create, we're going to create a file. Okay, so two things, you have to create a project. Now we're going to create a file. Uh, you can choose to give it a, na a name to your file. That helps if it's uh, a name related to the subject you're dealing with. Or um, you can leave it automatically. It comes up with a timestamp or the, with a date. So here um, we will choose the first option, this Sage Math Worksheet. Right? There are other options here, but we're going to go with that one. And this also takes a few seconds. This here is loading. And uh, you will see in a few seconds uh, what this, this looks like once it finishes. So it has completed the loading and now it's empty and we're ready to go. So we're ready to type commands uh, on these lines. And I am going to uh, show you um, a couple of calculations. Very well, so I uh, have a file here that I'd like to uh, navigate through this file with you uh, and I want to show you some commands. The first thing is that uh, you, you can uh, use this um, uh, number symbol, the pound uh, symbol, to uh, write comments. So whatever appears after that symbol will be ignored by SageMath. Uh, okay, so it's always good to have some comments. And um, the first thing that happens here is that there is a declaration of some symbols that are going to be used as uh, what's called symbolic variables. And the command to do that is uh, the, basically the, the prefix with three characters from the word variable, then V-A-R, these three letters in lowercase, uh, are, uh, this is the command. And so whatever uh, names you decide to use, for your variables, uh, you type those names here first, then there is an equal sign, then there is the command var, and then in between parentheses, you're going to declare the same uh, same names that you have on the left side of the equal sign, but they have to be between quotes. I hope you can see there is a, a quote here initially and there is another quote. And once you do that, then those commands are good to go. So you can put the cursor over there and hit this green button and maybe that was too fast there was some kind of i'm going to do that again uh hit the screen button there was some kind of green thing that uh, happens here very very fast and there is no errors if for example um if for example i forget to start here the quote i'm going to run that section of code again and then you can see immediately there's error there's an error message there Right, so trace back. This is a very uh, common uh, thing that happens whenever uh, there is an error. And so then there's an indication there that should help us find the error. But I'm gonna put back that quote and run this again, and then uh, it runs with no problems. There is no errors. Then the next thing we do is that we're going to define the expressions that are the right side of the equations. Uh, I call those G1, G2, and G3. They are declared between parentheses with the names of the symbols that we use for variables here for state variables. So here uh, we specify those equations, same uh, type of syntax as is maybe the same type of syntax that you would use in, um, in R. And um, if I uh, don't use these commands show, Okay, so I'm going to put um, comments in front of them. I'm going to run this again. And um, by running uh, this portion of code, nothing is displayed. Okay, I could choose to type here G1, for example, and run this. Um, So if I type G1 and parentheses in between parentheses as IR, then I get and I run that, then I get a display of the expression, uh, the expression that was defined as G1. I could do the same for uh, G2 and the same for G3. So I'm uh, missing here this G2. 
okay, and G2 and G3. So if I hit run, I get a display of this expression. Sometimes it's good to see the display in simple code. Sometimes it's better um, to see the display of these expressions uh, using the command show. So if we say show and pass the name of the variables that we want to see displayed, uh, we're going to get an output, okay, we're going to get an output that has a much better resolution in terms of, um, you know, in terms of uh, what is being displayed. Okay, so this confirms that these are the expressions stored in those variables g1, g2, and g3 that uh, the expressions we want to be working with. And then uh, what we do next is um, to make use of this command solve. Solve is a command used to solve equations, uh, linear or nonlinear equations. Uh, and um, notice here the syntax. Uh, you have uh, this initial parenthesis, right? This initial parenthesis. And uh, there are the first argument of solve. The first argument is right here, close, I have highlighted there. The first argument is something that lies between square brackets, okay? And inside those square brackets, we're specifying what are the equations we'd like to solve. So we want g1 equals 0, g2 equals 0, g3 equals 0. That's what we write inside the square brackets. Uh, the equal here, the equal is a double equal sign. This is just the syntax of how this works. Double equal sign. And then we separate those expressions with commas. After that first argument, we then type the variables on these equations and the variables we would like to find solutions for. Okay, so again, I'm going to uh, show you what happens if we run this. If we uh, run that command, uh, nothing really happens, but uh, if we say show um, this variable is called sol1, solution1, then we can see uh, under, with that command show, we can see a display of uh, the values, we can see a display of the solutions of the equations that we intend uh, to solve for. So uh, again, this is a summary, uh, the command solve will give us the solutions uh, of um, equations, and uh, we can then display those expressions using the command show. I would choose to do that. Then um, we can see here listed in between brackets, okay? This first set of values for S, for I, and for R, and then there is another bracket, uh, and that displays, maybe uh, I make something so that this uh, fits in one. Okay, so you can see there is uh, one bracket starting here, the bracket ends over there, and then the second bracket uh, with things separated by commas, s equals that, e, i equals this, r equals that. So that's second bracket. There are two solutions to that equation. One of the solutions has i equals zero. This is what we call the disease free equilibrium. And the other solution uh, is what we would call the endemic equilibrium point.